Oh, what the fuck? The infamous Twisted Metal series is a car combat classic known for its unique battle royale style gameplay, varied characters, and interesting story outcomes. How could anybody forget this flaming headed clown? I hope nobody goes home and fucks my mom. It was always a game series that was a little quirky and never took itself too seriously. But when Scott Campbell and David Jaffe got back in the studio to craft this one up, things got a little dark. Well, actually, things got a little black. Yeah, we'll just put a gun on the car. What a great idea. God, this competition's over. This is the Calypso house. house. You, you gotta enter. This looks like the place. Before we talk about Black, let's touch on how this game even came to be. Because after the release of the classic Twisted Metal 1 and 2 from Single Track, the publishers, developers, and producers decided to split their separate ways and work on other projects. This led to the development of the Twisted Metal series for 3 and 4 being handed off to 989 Studios, which naturally had a different take on the series. This led to mixed reception from series veterans and critics alike. Fast forward to the upcoming release of the hot PlayStation 2, and this is where things get interesting. Because series producers David Jaffe and Scott Campbell decided I decided to get back and get the squad back together, get some of those original developers from Single Track and produce a return to form proper Twisted Metal game for the next generation consoles. Consoles, I'm just talking about the PS2, not plural. Oops. They had two ideas floating around for this new next generation game. One was going to be a road trip USA style game that was more of a return to form classic style of the series. Where Sweet Tooth and the contestants paraded around across the United States of America duking it out in different cities and landmarks. And again, more of that quirky classic twisted metal style. But then there was the second idea. There really is some uh, deep dark evil motivations that kind of I think spark his uh... His Jaffe had this vision for this dark, demented, twisted... Well, the, the game's title's Twisted Metal. It, it, it makes a lot more sense when you start thinking about it. This really edgy, dark, more mature, violent, visceral... I don't know how many more adjectives I can throw on here to build it up. Creepy. Horrific. <laughs> Inspired by slasher flakes and cadaver statues, he wanted to make something that was truly shocking to the series. Something that really kept people on their toes. And that's the game we know today as Twisted Metal Black. This would prove to be the darkest turn that the Twisted Metal series had ever taken. Must have been years I was left alone in that darkness. But when you look like I do, it's probably for the best. <laughs> Ironically, around the release of this game, there was also a release of Twisted Metal Small Brawl. While the PS2 was coming out, they released this for the PlayStation 1, funny enough. Jaffe didn't have any involvement himself on this project, so again, it's quite different than the mainline entries that you're used to from the first game from Single Track. If you ever want to see your sneaky widow froggy again, you gotta play my game! This is known to be one of the most hated games in the series, but I actually look at it fondly. Maybe Maybe that's because of nostalgia. As a kid, I had really wanted this game. I watched the demo and the Twisted Metal demo disc over and over and over. Finally got it and I loved the hell out of it and I still think it had some of the most unique design elements in any Twisted Metal title. And if you watched my last Twisted Metal retrospective, you would know that this is the game I'm familiar with because I played a lot of this and I never had a PS2, so I never played Twisted, played Twisted Metal Black. Until now. Now while this is a much different take, the gameplay and story is pretty similar to what you would expect from a Twisted Metal title. In Twisted Metal, the driver that's competing in the series is granted a single wish of their choosing for surviving and outlasting the competition. In Twisted Metal Black, it's a little bit different because all of the characters come from an asylum where they're visited by Calypso. And Calypso is a little bit of a psychic now. He knows exactly what these guys want. He knows their deepest desires, their passions, their reason for living, and he promises to fulfill that if they win the competition. He said there was this whole life just waiting for me. All I had to do was win his contest. And then seemingly they're all just released from this asylum because, I, pff, reasons? How can I refuse? 
Typically in a Twisted Metal title, you play through the entire story for the ending, that one single cutscene at the end, and in Twisted Metal Black, they do it a little bit differently. In between the loading sections of every single map, there's a, just a little bit of dialogue sprinkled in on the loading screen for you to read, which kind of helps build the story up a little bit. There's also some intermittent cutscenes that'll play throughout the story. This is where they were proving to really try to put a little bit more emphasis on the narrative side of this game. They wanted this to be a little bit more serious, and they wanted to really build upon it a little bit more than the simple cheesy this is your wish play to the end there's the wish they wanted to put a little bit more thought into the characters of this now that i think about it maybe it wasn't all my fault But remember, the characters weren't the only thing they were trying to evolve for Twisted Metal Black. This was a game coming out for the PlayStation 2, the new, hot, next-generation console. So this had to be a next-gen Twisted Metal. There's so many little details in Twisted Metal Black that still surprise me that they're in this game. Like when you take off at full speed, your tires will spin and you'll do a little burnout. The graphics have been greatly enhanced. The levels are a lot bigger. Whenever you're swapping through your weapons, there's actually an animation of like the missile or whatever you have selected popping out of your car. Each character is significantly different than the other, so if they have a certain special attack, that's going to look completely different than the other car's special attack. And they all have these unique animations to accompany them. But easily one of the most impressive things in Twisted Metal Black to me is when the level evolves as you play in the story. There's a specific level where you're on a prison ship transferring to the yard and you can see the ship going through the ocean and you got the waves crashing over the ship and then the ship docks and then that level is opening up as you play it. There's also this drawbridge that gets closer to you as the level progresses and then you can shoot the operator station in the drawbridge to drop the drawbridge. And there's all these cool interactive elements in the levels that something like Call of Duty was touting back on Call of Duty Ghosts as being this hyped up next generation feature. Meanwhile, you got a game that came out in 2001 adding these elements. So we've introduced new interactive elements and player triggered events that make the maps evolve as the match goes on. The levels now are so different in size and scope, it's very impressive. Of course, they're for the most part going for this dark, grungy aesthetic, but you got snowy mountaintops, you got suburbs, a movie theater drive-in, a junkyard, your obligatory twisted metal rooftop stage. You got quite a selection on your hands here. And for the most part, all these levels play great. And that gameplay is the same classic Twisted Metal gameplay you came to love from the earlier titles. They didn't try to mix up the formula too much, and it's exactly what you would expect. If you played any other classic Twisted Metal title, you'll feel right at home with Twisted Metal Black. You still activate your special moves like your shield and your jump and your freeze attacks by doing a button combination on the D-pad. You got your machine guns that never run out, but they'll overheat if you use them for too long. You got your power missiles, homing missiles, fire missiles, your ricochets your environmental attacks like a lightning strike or something in the map shooting down at you, and of course your obligatory special attacks, which each character has one that's vastly different than the other one like I previously mentioned. Sweet Tooth shoots a barrage of rockets. Outlaw shocks you with a lightning taser thing. Darkseid has this super ram ability like he had in previous titles. So with each character that you're playing, you're getting something significantly different than the other, and during certain story sections or boss battles, these are going to vary on what works better than the other, but they're all all very different. And going along with all these varied characters are the special characters that you can unlock throughout the levels. Twisted Metal Black brings back some of those really cool level secrets where you have to shoot a little passageway that's hidden, or you gotta shoot down a plane that's in a level to crash and open up a certain area so you can drive down and shoot the little platform to lower down the car that you just unlocked and it's on this little podium and it makes you feel really good. And this is even cooler when you consider this is back in 2001 and it predates all the YouTube stuff, so it's like if you did this on your own time and you just discovered it yourself, that had to have felt amazing. And I think it would still feel amazing even if you were like me where you went to the library and you printed out guides and cheat codes. You wouldn't download a fucking car, would you? This has to be the hardest Twisted Metal I've ever played. In the story mode, you get three lives for each level, which at first I was like, hmm, that seems a little generous. If you win, you just get your three lives reset, because I could have swore in other Twisted Metal titles, you'd get like five lives for the entire campaign. So I was like, okay, that's a little generous, but as I played, it started to feel a little less generous. Because I was getting my ass handed to me. I was getting the floor wiped with me. 
All right, so you're gonna want to memorize where all of the health is in this game. Okay, you, this is an older game where your health doesn't regenerate. You gotta pick up health throughout the level to survive, and you're definitely gonna need it. If you have enough ammo in your arsenal, you can wipe out an enemy in seconds, but that same enemy can wipe out you in seconds. And multiply that by seven because all of them are going to be trying to wipe your ass out as soon as possible. They're not trying to kill each other, they're trying to kill you, but more on that later. Your ass is going to die frequently, and you're gonna die fast. Hot tip, if you're playing Twisted Metal Black and you're struggling, I've learned that if you have to drive around for a while to look for health at the edge of your life on like the last two people that you're fighting, you can sit there and just hit your reverse shot over and over and over. That's left, right, down, down. <laughs> I found myself using that one a lot. There's quite a few times I could cheese the AI, but more often than not, they were wiping the fucking floor with me, dude. I didn't stand a chance. This also carries over to the boss battles, which can be pretty damn unforgiving. You have two main boss battles. You have one in the middle of the game that you have to destroy the shields on each corner of the vehicle before you can bring the overall shield all the way down and start hitting it with your attacks. And then at the very end of the game, you have to fight a helicopter, which also has a shield on it that you destroy by destroying these tanker vehicles that fly into the helipad. Oh my God. So you're on the rooftop and this police helicopter is trying to arrest you. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. So gasoline tankers are flying onto the map for you to blow them up under the helicopter. I'm looking way too into this, all right? It's twisted metal. The cars don't even drive like cars. They drive more like zero turn lawnmowers. Why am I putting logic into this? I don't know. A man has to have his priorities. But bro, this helicopter level, man, you can't even take a breath without this helicopter raining missiles down on you. It's like, oh my God. And this is where the varying specials with the characters comes into play. Because like, say Dark Side with its ramming ability, this is virtually fucking useless with this helicopter up in the air. So if you have somebody like Sweet Tooth, you'll beat this boss within like two shots of your special. With somebody like Dark Side, you might have to replay this level three times from getting fucking ass kicked. But I guess that's just the name of the game and the variance in the characters, baby. You want that ending? You better work for it. Atmospherically, obviously this game is the most drastic shift that the series has ever seen. The characters are demented from this asylum. They're all psychopathic in some way. They've all been deranged or messed up in the head. There's no ounce of humor in this game. There's no happy-go-lucky or quirky vibes. It's all dark and depressing. This isn't a game you want to play if you're going through it. All of the characters have this violent or depressing backstory that just makes you either feel grossed out for playing them or it makes you feel bad for them, but either way, you love it. You wanna see it. There's something about this game that just intrigues you, you know? It's like a good horror movie. The tone of this game is just so consistent. It's got such a consistent art style and everything just kind of melds together perfectly. The level design, the characters, the cars that the characters drive, it all matches up and it makes perfect sense. Sweet Tooth drives an ice cream truck. No fucking shit. Their backstories in some cases are pretty good, like the officer that made the wrong shot sniping across the rooftops that one night and he wants to go back in time to fix things. Redemption. That's a big thing to offer a man without a hope in hell. How can I refuse? They even put a little more emphasis on a character like Sweet Tooth who generally just wants to kill everything. Now he's had this curse placed on him and his current mission is to win this competition so he can eliminate it. I never used to believe in curses, but it's been three months since that night and the pain gets worse every day. I think one of the most interesting stories for me though comes from a character that you actually unlock. This is actually a story that comes from the character of Sweet Tooth's brother. And he has the pleasure of watching his father get sh during an armed robbery. And he's also autistic, but he's very smart. So he finds a way to bring his father back to life. And his motive during the story is to keep his father alive. I have a brother, but my dad won't let me talk about him. He says my brother became really, really bad when he started driving this ice cream truck. It's really creepy. Most of these stories have a middle cutscene, but for some reason this one doesn't. But I wish it did, because this was one of the most interesting stories to me. It was very unsettling. Every loading screen you'd see his dad with the bullet hole in his head, and 
Oh, man. I hope I don't get demonetized for saying this stuff. It's all fictional, YouTube. It's from the video game from 2001. Please don't age restrict my video. How could I refuse an offer like that? But it wouldn't be right for me to talk about all of these atmospheric elements in the game if I didn't talk about how they were all tied together by the audio in the game, or more notably, the music in the game. Now, when it comes down to the sound effects, of course, there's all of these new sound effects, also accompanied by some of the classic sound effects that you'll definitely notice if you played the other games in the series. But what really sets this game over the edge is the soundtrack. And while I think video game music is typically an underrated thing in video games, this is definitely one of those prime examples. Because you have these dark harmonic symphonies and all these unsettling acoustic elements that really just set the mood. But also what really accompanies this amazing soundtrack is how it actually works within the game because the soundtrack is kind of dynamic. This was another one of those next gen things that really surprised me about this because I wasn't expecting this from a Twisted Metal title. Because I noticed that if I started to drive off in the distance and I became more isolated, that really loud symphony and that orchestra of crazy instruments battling it out with each other would start to calm down and all I would hear was the sound of the atmosphere. Things would start to get a little unsettling and it would start to make you uncomfortable from being alone. Typically in a game like Twisted Metal when you're running away from all of the action because you're low on health, you want a break from that. You want a, a feeling of relief. But Twisted Metal Black decides, nah, we're not gonna give you that. We're gonna make you feel like shit for being alone. So you just have this creepy, unsettling music playing for whatever map you're on. And as more characters start to get closer to you, the instruments ramp up. The music gets louder and more intense until you're in an all out brawl with the other people in the game. How is this twisted metal game from 2001 making me feel so dark and disgusting and uncomfortable. And a lot of that was achieved by its audio, its sound design, its music. And of course this is all of these elements working together, but I just wanted to specially mention that I feel like audio is something that goes a little unnoticed. I can't stress enough how all of these cool visual set pieces were something that were really cool, but the music is definitely something that I really wasn't expecting. And having that soundtrack kind of dynamically change as I was playing in these battles really was something that caught me off guard. And I thought it was really cool. Twisted Metal Black was the perfect storm of all these developers coming together at just the right time to create a really cool game for the next generation console, and it's almost damn near the perfect Twisted Metal game. I say damn near because, of course, there's some elements that weren't so perfect. Calypso, he called himself. It was a stupid name. I wanted to kill him there and then. Aesthetically and audibly, the game's a damn near 10 out of 10. I love it. And I feel like it's only aged very well with its art style. Because even though the graphics have aged a little bit, I feel like that also kind of fits the mood of the game. By the way, this is currently like the only twisted metal game you can play right now, all the way up to your PlayStation 5. Like if you have a PS4 or a PS5, you can play Twisted Metal Black right now. You can go on the PlayStation Store and buy it. But for some reason, this isn't included in their new PlayStation Plus classics, and they haven't added any Twisted Metal games to their PlayStation Plus classics for the PS5, which is really weird. But yeah, it's really interesting that this has stood the test of time and it somehow ended up on the PlayStation Store for you to play. A little bit of a sidetrack to the negatives part of this video, but I just wanted to quickly mention that. As much as I had those old urges of mine, I kept them to myself for the moment. First off, the biggest gripe for me where it really starts to come down a notch is uh, unfortunately in its gameplay with the AI opponents. When I said that the game was hard, it wasn't just because it was necessarily challenging. It was because the AI almost exclusively fights against you yourself. And I understand that there has to be an element of challenge and they have to generally want to go towards you and not towards each other because if you just sat around and they killed each other, there would be no challenge. But it's very obvious that they prioritize you over anything else. If you run into 
into an area with three of them, they're all gonna dogpile on your ass. They could be in the middle of a lunch break, they're gonna stop whatever the fuck they're doing and start piling you with everything they got in their inventory. The AI is relentless and they make it their mission to take your ass out above anything else. And I tested this, I decided to go into god mode and just see what the AI did for like 10 or 20 minutes. Lo and behold, I would say at least after 15 minutes I came back to the match and there were bots that still had full health. Full health completely. There were some that had their health whittled down slightly, but I mean again, we're talking about almost 20 minutes into a match. You should have some motherfuckers dead by now, not running around with full health. When it gets to this point and you notice it, it kind of breaks the immersion of this being a battle royale and every man for himself scenario and more of a you're just surviving against everyone else scenario. You might as well just position the story as you're going into an arena where everybody's set out to kick your fucking ass because you're the bad guy. I should have been more careful. There were very few times, if any, I saw an AI opponent kill another AI opponent. Most of the time I saw an AI opponent die, it was from them driving off of a cliff. Again, games of this era were hard, and I understand there needing to be a reason for you to have some difficulty in there. You don't want the game to be too easy, but also, it seems a little cheap to just have all of the AI going on to you. Maybe they'll be able to fix that with a patch or something. Something. We'll wait for an update. You are my chosen one, Jedediah. You are my child. I understand that you kind of have to take the story with a grain of salt and you can't take it too seriously because it's a twisted metal story, but sometimes the story elements were just a little bit on the nose. I wanted him to remove the part of my brain that made me so sad whenever I took a human life. Sometimes it seems like there was some effort involved into giving these guys some real deep, compelling stories, and sometimes it just feels like a teenager had put a layer of edge over it and said, yeah, this is what I found out of my high school diary or something. I mean, like, it's, some of this stuff's really surface level. Some of the characters in the story just really boil down to, I want to kill everything, and killing is what I set out to do, so I'm just gonna kill, 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 kill and this is really dark and edgy because I'm killing. What was edgy and cool in 1994, five and six was no longer edgy and cool in 2001. I wanted to be become the best killer there ever was. He didn't just operate on my head. He gave me a new pair of hands. They would become my trademark. When I killed, everyone would know it was me. I'll show them something they'll know. Alright, but how are you driving with those hands? There was also some weird alterations to the story elements. Like, I think there's an hour and a half video that you can find of just straight up altered cutscenes where they completely change the dialogue. Like, you have Dollface's story where her original story was that she was abused by her father and he nailed this mask to her face, which was a really dark domestic abuse scenario. If I ever made any noise, that'd make him real mad. But you know what? Sometimes I just couldn't help it. I didn't mean to upset him. I didn't mean to be so wicked. But they changed this story in the final version to be she pissed off her boss for spilling some coffee on a newspaper so he nailed a mask to her face because he's a mask maker. But then, this one day, I made a terrible mistake. I didn't mean to upset him. I didn't mean to be so clumsy. But I was just so stupid. It really just felt weird and unfitting. I don't really understand the parrying back of some of the elements like this. And again, this is the first Twisted Metal title with an M rating, so of course, judging by the theme of this game, you're wanting to have some dark elements. It was like, if you're gonna make a game like this, go all the way, touch on the darkest, most disgusting themes imaginable. Don't hold back. There were things I wanted to do in black that they wouldn't let me do, and some of it was just so fun. Okay, some of it was valid. We had a scene with the preacher who thought he was performing an exorcism, but he was crazy. He was really being asked to perform a baptism. He, he drowns this Well, we had this great shot of, and I have kids, right? I love kids. I'm a, I'm a nice, gentle guy, but it's a fantasy, right? And in the scene, there was this great shot of him pushing this little, you know, five-day-old I love kids. Into the, the baptismal, into the water, and his little arms and chubby little legs are kicking around in there, and he's just like shoving the thing down there. It's a fantasy, because in his mind, he's like exercising this demon. Sony made us cut that.
And this was definitely a scenario of, for whatever reason, they decided that it was the best choice to hold back on this and change it from her dad abusing her to her boss abusing her. It is what it is. I wanted him to remove the part of my brain that made me so sad whenever I took a human life. Okay, chill, 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 chill. I don't know. Depending on the character that you pick, you'll definitely have a different first impression of how these story elements play out, but... That was my experience. Not a deal breaker in any sense. I still like the stories, but it's just like some of them feel just like they have a just a layer of edge over them. Like they're just a little too edgy, you know what I mean? What was edgy and cool in 1994, five and six was no longer edgy and cool in 2002. When I made the retrospective for the Twisted Metal reboot for the PS3, I didn't expect it to reach over 100,000 views and be the most popular gaming video that I've ever done. But if you guys are here from that video, I only have you to thank for that so uh thank you and i hope that this was hopefully the sequel to that video that you wanted there's a really cool series of twisted metal retrospectives where this guy went along with david jaffe and talked about the entire series so i'll be sure to link that in the description as well i didn't see that when i did my reboot retrospective but i saw it afterwards and it's really awesome also if you want to support me further and you want to see some extra behind the scenes content that you won't see here go subscribe to my members tab and you'll get those special private videos unlocked thank you to all of my members Members right here and let's put it right here I don't know where I'm gonna put it YouTube doesn't really notify me when I get new members so I kind of have to manually check otherwise man that's all I got and hopefully I'll see you in the next one man it's been T see you guys all right Calypso I made it congratulations you've won the contest here's your prize A Calypso. Is this some kind of joke? Well, beggars can't be choosers. I came all the way here for a lemonade? I think it's about time for you to leave. I demand a better prize than this. I wasn't asking. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Yeah! Looks like you made it. Congratulations on winning the prize. <laughs> <laughs> I should have made your face wet.